All right, Peanut Gallery. We're doing Hecklin. What are we talking about? Well, we're actually going to be talking about the. Uh, we're going to be continuing my series on um, on uh, booking styles, and this time we're actually going with the big cheese here. We're going to talk about WWE's creative team um, and how WWE does things a little bit differently than uh, most other quote traditional wrestling promotions. What most people don't understand, I think, about WWE is that they don't see themselves as a wrestling company. And I, they, I don't think they've ever seen themselves as a wrestling company, even throughout the 80s and, and during you know, the golden years and, and that sort of thing, Attitude Era. They never saw themselves as just a wrestling company. They've always had the involvement of other aspects of the entertainment industry, whether that's WrestleMania 1 or WrestleMania 31 or, or, you know, whatever the case is. The point that I'm trying to make is that WWE has seen itself more beyond the walls of what traditional professional wrestling companies and look I, like. And, and I think what you need to take in consideration with that question, because I agree with you, that the original, I mean, McMahon, Vince McMahon is a third generation sports booker. Right. His grandfather was a boxing promoter. Yeah. So literally the boxing promotion went into the wrestling field yeah. and then from the wrestling field it went to WWE that we know now. Right. That's why that incorporation of big names has been instrumental with Capital Wrestling Corporation, with Titan Sports. And now with WWE. Right. So um, people people like to compare WWE to more traditional wrestling companies. You know, no. like AEW or Impact Wrestling or Ring of Honor. You just can't. And yes, the the their primary motive is to do wrestling. That is the means by which they do their promotion. Right. But WWE is more in the star creation um, sort of, I guess, category. I kind they're, of wish they would do better with it. But. I, I think that they lost their way there for a while, um, especially NXT when, when Triple H was at the helm. I hate to say it, but they tried to become like other wrestling promotions. Right. And I think that's what Triple H's vision was. But you have to understand that these people are not in the business of professional wrestling. They're in the business of entertainment, utilizing professional wrestling as a let as me know. A let me know when you stone. let me know when you need this. So um, a, a good moving, e- so moving forward, a good a good example of that is um, how Logan Paul and Jake Paul are in with boxing. Yep. They're not like officially within the boxing culture. But they're the stars. Right. They're right now the Floyd Mayweather right. is right now. Yep. That's why they're big time. Yep. And this goes even to the beginning. You know, you're looking at uh, – and, and this is actually – in doing more research, finding stars from outside of wrestling is something that WWE has been doing and every other iteration of it for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you might – you might think of, oh, well, what about, you know, the great wrestlers of the 2000s? These wrestlers were developed in the WWE system. Right. And they did that through the auspices of OVW at the time. Who knows? Maybe we'll actually see a renaissance with WWE um, coming up here in the and next so couple of years. And so what WWE is really good at from a developmental perspective is building up those stars. Um, and I think that they have been doing it well for a long time. They've and been around even, for as long even, as they have for a reason. Yeah. And, and even, even during the NXT black and gold era, the one under Triple H, they were still creating stars out of nothing. But with NXT 2.0, I think they're going back to those roots. And this is what WWE is really, really good at is finding a system to develop the star, not just a great wrestler, but also a great communicator, a great um, right. advocate, a great character. Now, we'll look and at- this is what they're doing. They're creating characters. They're not creating wrestlers. Right. They already have the talent, whether that is from wrestling or from outside of wrestling. What they are doing with the Performance Center and with NXT, um, even before they went to 2.0, is that they built stars – they built a complete character. And the the problem is that this complete character doesn't really work outside of the system very well. Right. Because they they don't have their way. They 
they're they're molded and trained by it. That's why some WWE quote lifers are going to be there for a life is because they are trained outside of the system. Like the Miz. Yeah, he's like a lifer. He's he was a lifer. trained he's trained within right. the system. Um someone like uh you know someone like um uh, John Cena, he's a lifer. He was built in the system. Brock well, Lesnar. Uh, with, with John Cena is a different situation because he started working out in the WCW power plant. Right. But that was very early in his career. Right. He but was, he was, he was essentially trained in the system. Right. Brock Lesnar is the same way. He was trained in the system. Mm -hmm. Batista, um, you know, even even the likes of, I know. Randy Orton. Yeah, Randy Orton. Sheldon um, Benjamin. Yep. They were all picked out from college, right. essentially. Right. And, and you have to understand that with this whole project that WWE does, they bring in these athletes from outside of professional, outside of wrestling, outside the professional wrestling sphere. But Kofi Kings is another person. Too. Yeah. To, to create these stars utilizing their own image. They're not just creating wrestlers. They're creating stars. And what WWE is also really good at – their their primary focus again is not on the wrestling. It is on creating moments, just like Kofi Kingston, just like Becky Lynch winning titles at WrestleMania. Those are Bianca what, Belair. That is what they are building up to. They're not building up to your sixty minute Iron Man matches. You're they're not building themselves up to to um, to create good wrestling and, and that's really weird coming from that perspective but you have to understand that wwe does not care about the wrestling they care about creating through the art of wrestling big moments they don't need to have long and matches. and and mega stars like john cena right. kurt angle batista i mean they all right they they all got their exposure they they essentially got glorified right. acting skills and stunt work right through that system and that's why there's that big relationship with the industry that is now yeah, the rock right the rock was he was, he was trained within the wwe system. The system right and so that's kind of what WWE is build, building to. They're building to these big moments. And that is how they structure and produce their matches. They don't produce the matches for the sake of having a wrestling match. They're producing the matches. They're building the story around the character and around the character creating moments. That is what WWE is really good at doing. Everything boils down to that moment and this is another good the, example the, of that the emotion that is what they're trying to create you're going there and it's like watching a a a a, a, um, a play uh, essentially is what it is you're not people are not going there for the wrestling i mean that's part of it but that's not the complete reason there's always something else that they're going there for mm -hmm. They're going there because of the stage, because of the pageantry, because of the moments that they don't want to miss, whether those moments are being watched on television or being seen live. Right, like Ric Flair retiring. Exactly. Ric, Ric, Ric Flair is a cultural icon Right. Um, outside of that, which is why the retirement Which is why he, he did well in the system because he came from that sort of entertainment. Well, he – well, well, I mean at the, at the time Ric Flair was retiring, he's been in the business forever. He, he's, a, he's a different situation where it's – he was – it's hard to explain about Flair because he became pop culture before he even went to WWE. Exactly. With but the that's, Rude, but the that's, Nature Boy, right, but that's, that's all him. But that's why he fit in so well. Right. But again – you're going after those moments. You're not going after the actual wrestling match. And that's what people who watch AEW don't understand is that AEW is a wrestling company through and through. Right. That you is their purpose. You get your entertainment because of the wrestling that is happening. WWE, it's not more so of the wrestling. It's about the story. That's where you, that's right. where you gain about, your entertainment right. from. It's about the, enter, it's about the, uh, the story. It's also about the moments. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at a match like the match recently between um, between uh, uh, um, Brian Danielson and Hangman Page. That was a sixty-minute match. If you're a wrestling fan, that was the best match of the year, right? Right. 
that match would not fly in the WWE because the WWE does not do those types of matches. They do the matches with those big moments. They're trying to induce emotion out of you. Right. Like Undertaker retiring. Or, yeah, losing his WrestleMania uh, moment. But that is the moment that they built up to. Brock Lesnar and Undertaker, they didn't have a 30, 60-minute banger of a match. They right. had a They had a wrestling match that built up to a climax, and that climax was the emotion... The, of, the of, energy that you are getting of, from that moment, right? And that's what peop- That's what they consider a good match. That's what WWE wanted because Undertaker at that time became a pop culture icon, and he was so synonymous with this. Right. Street. And again, the character work as well. You can. You could not have had that match without the aura of the Undertaker, without the the credibility the, of Brock Lesnar. The credibility of Brock Lesnar. And the storyline leading up to that moment, you could not have had that match. Okay, the the story the storyline without line, the storyline. Here's the thing: the, the, the story the storyline took a life of its own. Yeah, because it wasn't more so of Brock Les. It was more so of who can beat this streak more so than that contender. Right. And now there were people who had opportunities to beat him right. before, but they did not want to. Right. So, Lesnar took so that opportunity. Now, now it's this, it, and again. That is what WWE banks on. They bank on the fact that this story is being told and that these characters are being involved in it and they're trying to create a moment. They're not trying to create the greatest wrestling match of all time. And right. again, that is what most other companies don't do. And WWE think- does their entire process a little bit differently. Right. And that's what makes them work so well together. And the other thing, too, is you have to remember that WWE is not going after the same demographics that other wrestling promotions are going for. They're going after the the, the entire family. They're going after the complete but, – but the, they, they uh, want to find something that right, appeals but, but to But also, also, at the end of the day, WWE is a television company. They're a, they are. They're a media and television conglomerate. They're a, they're and a I media think company that happens part of, to part of do, production. Right, and again – that, that's a big part of it. They're a media company that happens to do wrestling. They're not right. a wrestling company that is involved in media. Right. They're a media company. That's why they do WrestleMania as big and bright as they do because exactly. it's WrestleMania. Exactly. People are not going there for the – they're going there for the great wrestling. Don't get me wrong. Again, but they're not going there just because of there, the wrestling. There's, there's, there is a legitimate pageantry in no, this. And, and the pyro and the moments. Right. And, because you know WWE tries to go all out when it comes to those. And you know you're always going to get something big at WrestleMania. Right. And, and again— this, Except for one. Right. That's, you know, that's here and over there. <laughs> right. But, the, the one in 2020. <laughs> right. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's, that's just the way that they do things. They do things a little bit differently because, because of, the, cause of the fact that— this vision is is and, and this vision is still being realized and optimized. Right. But then, it's it's not about the wrestling when you go to a WrestleMania. I, and I hate saying that. It's it's not. <laughs> it's it's, it's not. legitimately not. You go there because it's a huge stadium. You go there because of the entrance. You go there for the pyro. You go there for the moments within that sphere. But right. I'm sorry. This is more visually the, appealing to me than like a full gear, but that's that stimuli that WWE wants. Right. And this this is their focus right here, not the people wrestling there. That's just the means to the end. Right. And the people that are performing in the ring are people who were raised in this system. Right. And again, that is why a lot of them don't do well outside of WWE and other wrestling promotions. I think some can. Some can. Let's let's just take the New Day for example. They have the charisma, the talented. They, they're all talented wrestlers, but they also have the charisma, the creativity, and they they have they have these characters built. These characters are are something that are a product. Remember, remember what the New Day was supposed to be. Right. And They're, how they took that but, and made it into th- this. But see, this is what I want to get at too, is that these characters could not work as well outside of WWE. The reason that these characters work well, and this goes back to the 80s. This was something that was being done in the 80s. There's nothing different about the characters. The characters are a huge part of how WWE does their creativity, right. how they produce their matches. And again, this is something that doesn't work as well outside of the system. 
Because in other wrestling promotions, it's about what happens inside the ring. In WWE, it's almost not. It's not what happens inside the ring. All of it is what happens outside of it. What happens inside of it builds the moment that people are waiting for. Right. The satisfaction, the, the emotion that's running through them. And these things would not work without the characters, without the mystique, without the storylines that lead up to the match. Right. And the match is just a, a little piece of what happens. Right. It's not the whole show. Right. It, it's, and, and this is something that they don't stray from. They don't, they don't stray from this. There right. might have been t- – even during the Attitude Era, they still had the outlandish characters. Yep. They just turned it up to 100. And, and you they, know, when I, when I go to something like AEW – and I'm going to use AEW and Impact as a lot of comparisons because relative to relative to um, to WWE, their characters look they 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 look bland. They're not up to 150, if you know what right. I mean. There, there are some who do. There are some who and do. Then they they really stand out, like your Donhausen. Right. Obviously, that's a character turned up to a million. But also WWE, I think, why you chose John Cena because number one, he has a much bigger star power now than he did. He, he but is also, a, he he's is, a merch mover. right. Yeah, and that's the other thing too is that the people who have these characters, they build these characters because they have there are multiple revenue sources that can come from every single. You character. have you have John Cena. People go to shows to watch John Cena. You have all of the attire that he had because. He he was built for that. And the New Day are just a modern example of a John Cena right. was back in 2010. And again, they're that merch is, movers. And that's what WWE looks for. They're not looking for people who are good wrestlers. They're looking for people that can move merchandise. Right. And people who can connect with an audience like your John Cena, like your New Days, like your Roman Reigns is now. Right. Like they're all merch movers now. People want to see Roman Reigns yeah. compete. They that's want what to. WWE looks for. They, is... well, they, well, they want to see the Usos because people are like, oh, did you see that Usos match? It was really good. Watch it. I right. think there are I think there are some people who even their the wrestling acumen helped them more so than anything. Right. And I think the Usos are an example. John Cena, he John Cena's not a bad wrestler. No. He just he was just really pushed. Why? Because he connected with an audience of and people. He built up these and Ray, 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 Ray Mysterio Ray Mysterio is another great example way, yeah. of that. He, as, despite being a really, really good wrestler, a good luchador, he's a merch mover. The yeah. masks, they're colorful. They're different. Yep. It attracts the kids. Yeah, exactly. And WWE wants complete control over that. And now the other thing I want to talk about too is, is PG. Now everyone does not like WWE PG, but understand this. WWE has been PG for a very long time. The difference, the the big difference with WWE as it relates to that is that when they went public, they have to have a certain image. Right. And that is why they had to go PG. They, they, were, they, they, were, were, they were PG back in the 80s. Yeah, but that was that was that era, and if you look at the ratings in that era. It wasn't they weren't good. No, there that's not the point. The point the the, the point is is that WWE's target demographic are not are not the eighteen to forty nine? It was in the Attitude Era. It was during it, well, actually during the sixties and seventies. It was actually more adult oriented because that was the popular yeah. thing to go to. You take don't your, don't at me, okay? Let's okay. So, anyways, the point I was trying to make well, it, it ebbs and flows. The point I was trying to make is that if you're a twenty something year old male, you're not gonna watch it now. The WWE is not your product. No. That is not your target. They're no. not. They're. They don't. They don't care. Unless you have kids. If they. If you. If they have kids. Yeah. Because you want the whole family. Yes. This is. It's supposed to be a family experience. Right. But I think. I think what a lot of people when they're having a moan about WWE, I don't think they're putting into perspective that when you have children, your you you look at stuff differently. Yeah. And when you are like, hey, I watched wrestling when I was a kid. I want to introduce my kid to it. What are you gonna put on for them? Are you gonna put on big, flashy, colorful character WWE? Where you can go to a show like twice or three times right. a year, depending on the city that you live in, or are you going to put on AEW, which is going to be it's maybe a little, a little more, more grungy, gory, a little more right. grunge, a little more that. I'm sorry, that's just what that is. WWE's all never always targeted that. They had to change it during the Attitude Era, and it was different in the 60s and 70s. Even, but but even right. even during the Attitude Era, 
Mm. They they were not like WCW was. They just did things a little bit differently, and that's what put them on top. WCW was focused. This that might be a that might be a debate episode because I'm going yeah. to disagree with you on that. Okay. that I, that's actually might be a really good show. Yeah, uh, but, but we'll put, but we'll put my, that in some notes. My point is, is a lot of what we're seeing today with WWE, a lot of these changes, they're not really changes. They're going back true to form. They're going back to the roots that they have built. They're going back to the characters, the storylines, the moments that built the empire that they are a part of. This is something that has been going on forever. There. WWE didn't get worse. WWE uh, didn't get boring. You just, be- grew, you just grew up. You just grew up. And you want the wrestling. You don't watch WWE just for the wrestling. Right. You have to have the complete package. And that is what WWE is focused on. A WWE is not focused on the wrestling. You're not going to have your five-star banger matches in traditional WWE programming because that is, not the, that is not the purpose of those matches. The purpose of the matches is to build up for the moments that get people riled up, that get people emotional, and that is what people go for when they're selling merchandise, when they're selling tickets. It's all about the character and the, the ring just happens to be the action in which that character can come to life. For it's those like it's 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 like um it's like a um it's like a cartoon, like an animated yeah. show. They don't give a shit about the show. They give a shit about the merch that it can push. Yeah. That's the key difference. Yep. And that's what WWE does. Their their bottom line is outside of the actual wrestling. Yeah, it's it, it's the live to live, the end. live ticket sales are just a small piece of that fortune, and that right. is something that is very plainly obvious. They make money on a variety of different things. It's, it's sometimes hard for people to see that. Yeah, though. live events just being a very small part of it. Right, and that's the vision that Vince had way back. He wanted to create a show. He did want to create good wrestling. Wrestling just happened to be what he was good at understanding because right. he learned it from his father, from his grandfather. He's a promoter, and and if boxing was still a thing, he'd probably be a professional, you know, boxing promoter. But the the point is, is that WWE does things a little bit differently, and they care about things a little bit differently because it's not about what happens inside the ring; it's what happens as a result of what happens inside the ring that they're most interested in. Right. So that's what I got. All right, great. Um, I thought it was a great discussion. So when we come back, we are going to talk about the history of New Year's Day shows. Okay. 